Okay, so in this one, we are going to be talking about promises in JavaScript. So what is a promise? So a promise is nothing but a contract. We have that uh, uh, operation is eventually in the future is going to give us some value. And like right now, it hasn't given it yet, but we have a contract that it will eventually get it. So where does it actually getting used? So let's say we have an API call that we have done. So let's say the API will give us the response in about, let's say three or four seconds. So that is a like huge time gap. So we know that eventually, maybe it's going to give us a value. Like maybe it can give us an error, like uh, let's say the value is not present or it has given some error, like uh, uh, some HTTP errors, but eventually that operation happened in the future. So that is a contract that we have. So that is what promises help us. In. And uh, let me give an example. So here we have a function patch data, which is returning as a promise object. So the promise object contains two fields, either resolve or reject. So we are simulating an asynchronous operation using a set timeout method. So instead of set timeout, you are going to have some maybe API that you're going to call. But for our example, we are using the set timeout. So what this set timeout has, it has a simulating a two second delay. And in this case, we have set it to success true. That means we are going to return some value. So this resolve, which is a delegate. So this resolve is going to give us data fetch successfully. And when we are going to set it to false, we are going to have a reject, which is going to give us an error, fail to fetch the data. And here we are calling the fetch data. And here if you see the rest dot then, so that is, that is a chaining that we have done. That result dot then is going to give us the result. So let me just run this and let me show you. How it is actually happening to run without debugging okay and here you can see when i have console dot logged it at this point in time so this time the method was called and it has given a promise object and this promise object contains a promise state which is pending so the promise object contains two fields here you can see a promise state which will tell you either the operation is pending, successful, or is it has given some error. And it contains another field promise result, which is currently undefined because at this point in time, we have like simulated an error, sorry, not error, but a delay of two seconds. So that's why we haven't got an error. Sorry, result. But if you expand this, so eventually this promise state got fulfilled. Here you can see fulfilled. And it has given us a result date of it successfully. So that is what the promise actually help us in. And also, it also help us in actually avoiding the callback hell. So callback hell, I mean, like uh, here, we have chained the methods here, dot then. So instead of console.log, maybe you could have some data transformation function, which you can apply here when there is a result that eventually came back and you can also avoid the actual chaining of it if let's say we got an error so let's simulate an error and let me show you how this will work so if i save it and let's rerun this so again we got a pending undefined and here you can see I got an error and here you can see the promise result error failed to fetch data so which was we expected the error message failed to fetch data and you can see the promise state as rejected so this reject part handled the actual error which we will get so that that's what the promise is all about and another thing what we can do is so I have added a line here dot then. So let's see in this case, what will happen. 
like uh, is it going to have just just the catch and will this stop here or will this go further so let me run this okay so here you can see that the catch block only worked till here and after the catch this dot then chain method still ran i am running so this is like one of the case where you can like avoid like catching for the further down below chaining methods if you have like uh, if you don't want to handle the errors in that case also so in this we saw how the promises and like how the promise works and like you have seen uh, the, like the chaining of the methods and how you can avoid a callback hal using this but hal okay hal. so and like now what the promise is we now know that a promise is nothing but a contract that an operation like uh, which will like happen in the future or complete in the future so we can actually have the inversion of control using that so like what the inversion control by that i mean so we don't have to depend on a function to actually call back a function so that's what the promise is all about promise gives you the control that uh, your function will run eventually in the future so that's what the promise gives you the ability for the control and that's about it for this